Welcome back to the Hit Eye Podcast with your host Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. And our guest, everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite. I don't know about that. You love him or you hate him? No, we love him. Our slab and Dara. Chad had a little uh, work injury, <laughs> looks like. Yeah, I'm going to hit up uh, Workman's Comp after this. <laughs> yeah. A little bloody nose. Yeah. It's California, so I'm sure you could find somebody to My wife's in this room if you wanted to. She's a Workman's Comp. <clears throat> Okay, we'll you're all situated. set. Yeah, you're all set there. Uh, the World Series is set, boys. Going to have the Philadelphia Phillies from the National League taking on the Houston Astros in the American League. But before we get into the uh, AL NLCS and the World Series, a couple little uh, news bits floating around Major League Baseball. Uh, Terrier Francona will be returning to the Guardians in 2023, which... I mean, you see that young team play, you got to be kind of excited to uh, carry them forward again, considering they almost knocked off the Yankees there in five. Yeah. Uh, but the big one was Bruce Bochy coming out of retirement to take the uh, the Texas Rangers. You shake your head. Why? Stay retired. <laughs> Lab, what do you say? Uh, I mean, he's got an itch. Um, and, I mean, dude, just... We need more Bochies back in the game, I guess. Do you uh, do agree that aspect? That, like, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. Just, I, I don't know. I mean, he just had that itch or something. I see. You know, you see it from a players guy. There's a lot of players that that you know. Look at the past couple of years. Had quite a few players retire and come back and stuff. I mean, so be it for, on his behalf. I hope he comes back and they've got some talent in Texas. I, I think they've drafted well and uh, they've got some guys coming up in the system that, that are going to help the big club down the road. They've done, you know, what they've done on the international side. And I mean, I, I think Texas is trying to make some moves over there. Uh, what so. did he really get to leave Frisco? I mean, did you, do we feel like he got maybe pushed out a little bit more so than retired? Cause I know I talked to a lot of giants friends. They, they felt like he, he wasn't done. Like he got pushed out. More than likely, got more than likely. Uh, I think they've gone. Uh, they've gone a whole different route than what Bochi would. I mean, he's not wearing what Kapler wears. He's not going to be doing the analytical things that Kapler's going to be doing. And uh, it's a different. They're it's, they're different. Totally different. But Kapler's probably more of what they want. Uh, Bochi's would more, would be more of the old school kind of guy. Um, you know. Like, that's going to butt heads with, hey, the numbers say this. And he's going to say, well, my gut says that. Well, he <clears throat> he was quoted, I guess. They were talking to him about, you know, taking the gig and coming out of retirement. And he's like, you go back to when I started. He referenced, uh, you know, the managers back in the day drove the bus. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you talk to an owner or GM, but you still drove the bus. Uh, because of analytics, decisions are data-driven. That has been the biggest shift I've seen. The front office and their analytics with coaching staff is more of a collaboration. As a manager, you might say, I see that, but you're still not driving the bus. And I mean, I get that idea of wanting to kind of control the way certain things or decisions are being made. You're a little closer to it, Lab. I, we may have talked about this in the past, but how... <laughs> How big, how much the organization is involved in decision making, like he's kind of saying here. I mean, I've heard Joe Madden say it recently too. Like, there's, it's de it's going on big time because <clears throat> everybody's shitting on Dave Roberts. You've seen that, and you've oh, had, it's horrible. But like, how much of that comes from not just him going out and making a decision? What do you mean? Like, like him? It's uh, Mark Pryor's in his ear. Right? Is somebody upstairs in Mark Pryor's? Is there? Yeah, man. Like, like that, that's true. They're, they're they're blowing Dave Roberts up. Madden's not lying. Like it's got nowhere. These dudes are so adamant about what they believe in analytically, and the numbers that they are very pushy. Uh, I mean, look at their the Astros aren't even carrying a left-handed pitcher, dude. And the bull they don't have a left-hander outside of uh, uh, Valdez, the starter. They don't have a lefter in the bullpen. Bullpen. They don't believe that. They think their righties' numbers analytically match up well against right-handed hitter or left-handed hitters, so that's what they roll with. Um, I don't. know. I was thinking about that earlier. I was talking to my buddy, works for, oh, we works for Astros. Said, well, maybe this is like a going to be a battle of, you know, you guys are kind of data-driven in a lot of ways, and the Astro or the, the Phillies are more 
It's Dombrowski, dude. He's he's more old school. Maybe this is like a little battle of old school, new school type World Series. And I don't know if they're going to turn that into it, but uh, we'll wait and see. But it is taking place. Absolutely. And it's taking place. I mean, it's not. People fought it for forever. I mean, I remember we had the discussion in 2020 when the Rays made, you know, Kevin Cash made some of the moves he made. But I mean, they also manage the teams these, these way, this way or the way they do all year long. It's well, not just a post. The numbers are taking strategy, <clears throat> the strategy, the gut feel, um, the matchups. It's taking a lot. I mean, it's taking the managerial position <clears throat> out of the game. It's like, I mean, uh, they want to, you know, look at no left-handed specialist. Uh, you, the double switch is gone with no DH or uh, with, 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 with DH in both leagues. Um, just, you know, th- there are certain things that, of the game like that, that they're taking away from, you know, look at, dude, it, you, you turn the TV on, there's a, there's a box for the strike zone. Well, that's not the umpire strike zone, dude. That's what baseball is deemed or our analytical department is deemed what they think is a strike. Well, every umpire has a different opinion, man. Like put that box out of there. That box causes more, more BS. I think than it helps. It, it turns everything into a question. Oh, that was a borderline pitch. Well, that's a strike zone, dude. Well, cause now everyone that's missed <clears throat> costs the team, the game. Oh, if they could appeal check swings, dude, we'd be watching it. Well, what is, so what have you seen the clip out there of the minor leaguer tapping his helmet to challenge a ball the strike fall, in the fall league? No, I haven't seen that. So That's it's absurd. A, it's a pitch down. Um, it was Dominguez from uh, the Yankees. It was called Jason. a ball? It was called a strike. It was called a strike. He just taps his helmet. They replay it, it, challenge it right then and there. Turns out it was a ball, and he got a ball. Oh, man. I thought they were trying to speed the game up. Does that really speed I, It didn't take up? that long. But I'll, still. Say, I'll be honest, but I, it's... <laughs> Well, I wasn't that, ready for that. That might eliminate the the one knee catching. I mean, because the guys are one knee catching to basically frame pitches. That's that's all it is. The lift pitch is up to make them appear as strikes. Um, and I mean, it's going to just kind of take the catching position away from those guys, like receiving per se. Like they're still going to have to catch the damn ball and, and throw it to second because now we got bigger bases. Guys are going to steal more. You can only pick twice. And I, dude, like I don't know what's the next rule. I mean, we're not going to have to run on a round ball i mean it's just it's out, and out all right yeah like what nobody you know hit and runs and have you seen a hit and run in a while I hit, in the playoffs. was it I last night it was uh no, or the, it was game was three the, i think it was in the wild card i just saw it with the phillies and the and the padres phillies that'd be a team that would. Do I, I think the, i think it was the padres that t- may have done it somebody yeah it worked perfectly got I first mean, to third and yeah you know i i don't know but Going back to like the analytical stuff, like that stuff's definitely taking a, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a heavy, it's a big part of the game now, man. I mean, it really is. Uh, they don't want to consider batting average until they talk about how another team's, a, a dom- another team's pitching staff has dominated. Oh, they're only hitting 170. Well, why is it important now? You don't care about it when it really, you know, like you haven't it, talked about it all year. Yeah, batting average is, is is unimportant to people, but all of a sudden during the playoffs, oh, that team only, you know, they shut the team down. They hit 180 against the the bullpen, or they're hitting 085. Yeah. Now it's important. Well, having guys on base and pressure and 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 the playoffs, man, the playoffs is a whole different animal. You can just everybody's O and O, and who's ever is playing hottest when they get in, they're going to run with it usually. I mean, look at what Philly's done. Uh, San Diego did it towards a lot of at, at the end of the season and just, you know, they kind of lost a little momentum. They ran into a team that was a little bit hotter than them. Uh, you know, Bryce Harper's swinging the bat better than anybody in the game right now. Um, I don't know what he's doing, but if you look at where's most of his damage at, Oppo. opposite field, yeah. man, you know, and, and his bat path, you look at, it's not ripping through the zone. Uh, he's he's using the whole field and, and he's damaging baseballs and, and driving in runs and coming up with big clutch hits, uh, you know, left on left. Staying on a pitch, that's a tough <laughs> dude. Left on left, hater, and he's going left center off 98. Come on, dude. Like, that's that's the type of hitting you should be watching. It's not this rollover Johnny uh, nonsense to the pull side hitting into the shift. Like, hit the hit it where they ain't. Yeah, getting into the Phillies Padres. Uh, Phillies take down San Diego game five. That uh, was last night. Uh, one of the decisions in that game has been talked about all morning, and I. You know, we just mentioned Roberts. You know, Roberts got to go. A lot of people are bringing up the Roberts needs to go. Uh, I've seen the you know Melvin talk of he needs to be fired for, you know, Harper comes up in the eighth. Uh, Swars is on the mound, a righty. 
and they stay with him. And so the questioning is, why didn't they get the hater was getting up in the pin? Why didn't they bring him in to come throw to Harper? And uh, he's gotten crucified for it. I don't know what the analytics said. I would assume they would say take the matchup, right? But then you're also asking your lefty, which I read, uh, and Hader hadn't gotten more than five outs since 2019. So I, and I don't know how – I've never had to do it. I don't know if getting five, six outs as a reliever closer, how challenging that is. But their thought was Suarez has been good. And they felt like that was a matchup that was okay. I, I don't know where you guys feel on the matchup play because sometimes I'm for it against it. I don't know. Again, I think I think when a, a hitter's hot, it doesn't even matter. I think with Harper the way he is, it doesn't even matter because when he took that 92 mile an hour changeup, like that was borderline. He was locked in. He wasn't getting out. And I just feel like Suarez could have got him out. He had plenty of chances. But well, that was it. I mean, he fouled <laughs> off some pitches. Like it's not like it was just. Get in there and rip. He worked the count. Yeah. Had a good take. Fouled some balls off. Oh, yeah. And no. he freaking hit 99. He had an approach, you mean? Oh, yeah. Harper had an approach. <laughs> oh, he just wasn't ghetto hacking. Okay. <laughs> approach. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, know. I just think Harper's the guy right now where I don't think matchups even matter to him. He's going to hit anybody. No, but I'm still going left, left. <clears throat> like, regardless. Uh, they didn't have hand up. I mean, he wasn't anywhere. To hey, hey, uh, hand for for Philly, fun, probably. <clears throat> no, no, for Philly, yeah. No, no hand, hand, hand is with Philly. Philly. Yeah, see, yeah, it was, it was well. Hater was up. That was the thing. Hater's up. Yeah. Um. And again, I don't know how big a deal it is that he hasn't gotten any. He gotten more than five outs in three years, but that was kind of one of the questions. Um. You know, ultimately, just he just felt like that was the best situation right there. I guess get being game four, game five, and it's your season. Do you play it that way? And if if haters your best lefty to face their best lefty, you went out and got him. You go <clears> play <throat> the. Ma- I mean, you go take the matchup, right? That's why you got him, right? I mean, right. That mean you, you, you trade for game. you trade for that that left hander to get that left hander out in that clutch moment, and Bryce Harper won. I mean, and I think he said Garcia was available in the bullpen. Also, if it if it got further. So you're right. Hater didn't have to close. It's in that moment. Do you go your best? And if Harper clips Hater, then even more so tip your cap, right? Yeah. But I don't know, man. I, <clears throat> the Phillies just seem like kind of unstoppable right now. Like usually Bryce Harper's locked in. Hoskins locked in. Hoskins had a great series. Like Segura, like Segura's had the best. Seven really good like, two strike abs, man. Yes. Like those are what. And I like watching Segura in the offseason, like him train. He trains with Nelson Cruz, and I watch those videos of them hitting with their – they have a swing coach from the Dominican, and it's it's unbelievable the way they do – what they do and the drills they do and how level their swings are. And he's just prepared to be a, a hitter. He's a hitter. Segura. Yeah. I was surprised. Uh, he came from Seattle. Yeah. I was surprised they let him go. He's He's been a solid player uh, for the past couple of years in the big leagues. But there, it, it's a really good lineup. <clears throat> They're going to run into. I mean, dude, Houston's kind of a buzzsaw right now too. I mean, that pitching mm-hmm. staff, um, that pitching staff's really good. Uh, the liners. The, I mean, Altuve hasn't done anything. I mean, imagine if that guy starts hitting a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you got probably one of the the best switch hitter probably in the game in Alvarez. Um, dude, you, you've got a pretty good lineup uh, running up there. Um, top to bottom, Bregman's, Bregman's clutch. Yeah. He he's clutch, man. Like that dude lives for the big moment. He thrives in the big moment. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't trying to to jump ship. He was trying to stay inside the ball. Uh, you saw that with his swings last night. Uh, you know the swings he was taking. It wasn't like this over regret. Like he was literally. Like he was trying to stay inside on the inside part of that ball. Like a good sinker. Um, Would have been real easy for him to roll over. Uh, but man, he stayed inside the ball and, and and put a good swing on a ball. Yeah, he got jammed a little bit, but dude. Where was the exit velo on that? That's a pretty big hit, right? You know, like nobody shows the exit velocity on that. It's a knock. It's an RBI knock. It's a huge knock. Um, the exit velocity means shit on it. Um, that's just called hitting. That's like the Segura base hit with two strikes, one hand flare <clears throat> over second base that picks up an RBI. <clears throat> oh, that doesn't matter what the exit velo is. Hit it where I, they ain't, I, man. I love it. Um, there was another another situation in that Phillies. Padres game uh, in the ninth. Um, 
where they get two walks, it's first and second one out. They make a change from Robertson to uh, Ranger. Yeah, they brought in Ranger. And uh, Trent Grisham's hitting and tries to drag bunt there. And, I mean, I saw a lot of people, again, one out, you don't bunt there. It was discussed reading today, like, him and Melvin had discussed it. Uh, if the first baseman stays back, like, execute a good drag and its base is loaded. That's the thing. If it's executed, we're not even talking. We were saying, oh, that was a great. 100%. A great choice. Well, the field was wet. You got a guy fresh out of the bullpen. You're that falling first, off the first side. pitch, falling off the other way. That has to go now. You get him out of his comfort. Second baseman's back. Got to go first make a play back. on a wet field. And it was still, you know, we got beat by a step. It's a it's a baseball play that backfired, <clears throat> and the and the you know the the outs didn't necessarily match the type of uh, play that they were trying to do, which that that's what really puts up the kind of the, the 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 alarm, like the red flag, like oh my god, they did it with one out. But given the situation, I understand what they were doing. I mean, um, but if the guy's that good of a bunner, dude, he ain't missing in the middle. Well, and that's you the know, thing. Like, like I was thinking about it. Right, worst case mm-hmm. is what happened. Or maybe he bunt it, pops it up, and they double right. play. But if he swings and hits a double play, game's over. Yeah, right? but he, so he doesn't execute a bunt. Like a base hit, you still need a base hit to score the runner from second, regardless no with one out, right? Right. And that's not even a guarantee that he scores. So he bunts. It does. It, it, he doesn't execute a bunt for a base hit, but still moves the runners to second and third. Now a base hit scores two. Whereas if he hits a base hit, you tie the game. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I, I get. I get the thinking of it. But people were up in arms over it and kind of, you know, some of the comments were he wasn't confident in himself to to pick up a hit there. And Grisham's had some pretty clutch ABs. I know his average throughout the season was very low, but he's had a pretty big postseason uh, up until this series, really. I think also, I mean, you know, if you're if you're going to play the wet card, you're going to play like that. Okay, well, then what if he hits a ground ball? That guy's a plus runner, dude. That, that that ball's a snot ball if it's running you know running on that grass. That that's too. Those aren't you know. Look at the Yankee game. They screwed that backhand flip right. up. All it takes is one bad flip. One you know, especially throwing a snot ball around in that on a top. routine. Yeah, play. on routine. And that guy's a good runner. Like that's not guaranteed a. Du- I don't think he's a guaranteed double play in my opinion for that guy if he hits a ground ball. It's got to be a bullet right at somebody. If you got to go side to side wet ball, man, that's no guarantee he's he's getting doubled up. But. Like I said, I, I think if the obviously if the out was a zero, nobody would say shit. Yeah. Um, but given the fact that there's one out, yeah, hey man, you got to kind of scratch your head a little bit. And I did. I mean, but I, I understand it. It's a baseball play. I get it. You're given the situation you're in. It's wet. Blah blah blah. The relievers in. Go for it. You know, you rolled the dice. Came up. It's Coach P would say, man, you rolled the dice. It came up snake eyes, man. That, That's just the way. Well, in the bottom of that order, kind of didn't have the same run they've been mm-hmm. having. Uh, they had with the Mets and they had with. The Dodgers. Uh, right. <clears throat> I mean, again, it's just kind of one of those things where the Phillies right now are like, I firmly believe that the two best teams playing baseball right now since the postseason started are playing in the World Series. Yep. And, you know, I saw uh, Coach Marshall, uh, who's a big supporter of ours at CVC, uh, tweeted something out the other night or last night. And I kind of wanted to bring it up because I don't know if did you see it? Mm-hmm. Um, shout out Coach Marshall. I know this was probably most people. I would have was reading some of the comments. It seemed like some disagreed with it, but uh, the Phillies are the, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies got third place in their division and will now play for the World Series. Seems to be what MLB wants. Is it good for baseball or no? I saw that. What do you what do you what do you what do you think on that? Because I, I think mean, I don't think baseball. MLB decided. No, obviously not. But be having you know, you know, you had a bunch of wild card matchups. Their series, which I honestly liked. Um, I think just because we've been having this debate on like the best team, what what constitutes as the best team? Because you spent the most money on your players. You may have the some of the best players, but are they do they form the best team? Because right now the Phillies look like the best team. They look the most. Co- they look super. And the Astros, yeah. like they look tight. It looks cohesive. Right. It looks like they trust each other. It looks like that. You said last week, like teams that are playing where they don't give a fuck. It just looks like that. Yeah. They they look comfortable. They don't look rattled. They don't look phased. 
They didn't look down at any point in the game. And that that crowd in Philly was insane. Um, as if they have nothing to lose. To me, I think it's great for baseball. I mean, we've seen, how many teams have we seen the underdog? The do- Fresno State's one good example. I think Ole Miss last year in the College World Series yeah. is a great example where they were they were barely in. Yeah. And they lost one game through the College World Series. Yeah. Like and I, and I guess that's a different animal. It's what sixty four teams, but it's like anybody at that point can win. Still, yeah, they were preseason though. Sure, you know, and they kind of they 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 kind of shit down their leg throughout the season and were kind of lucky to get in there towards the end. But and same thing, man, playing good baseball at the right time of the year uh, and and putting pressure. Their pitching staff was good. They 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 swung the bats well. Um, you know, like I yeah, it's it's not. Rocket science, man. Like, but alluding back to the the a third place team, it, who cares? Like, it's the playoffs, dude. Like I said earlier, man. Once you start the playoffs, it doesn't matter you're like how you got in, dude. You're in. You're in. You got a shot at the. You got a shot at the big boy. Like, um, and, and if they want to go back and look at history, I mean, I'm I don't have it in front of me, but I would imagine that <clears throat> if we look back the last since they started the playoff and the wild card, the wild card team has won. The World Series, yeah, I think quite the Giants, a few years. I know the Giants went on there. Was it ten? When they I think had, so, I saw a stat. Don't quote me on it. It's like since nineteen oh seven, only fifteen times has the best team in baseball won the World Series. Yeah. Since nineteen oh seven. Well, and you got to look at it this way too. And I think it goes back to your point, like being hot at the right time. They had to go beat the Do- the Padres. Had to go beat the Dodgers. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know the Phillies had to beat the Braves. <laughs> You know, on the road. Yeah. Um, it's not like they didn't knock off. Defending champion, dude. The Braves on the road. And that, you know, they just outplayed them. We talked about it. They they just, they got beat. There's it's no baseball. there's no excuse. Same as the Dodgers. I mean, the Dodgers aren't playing good baseball. This, they're not, they haven't been playing good baseball. Their bullpen has not been the same that it was throughout the season. Uh, they're starting pitching. But Gonsolin was down. Uh, the uh, Bueller was out. Like, Dude, it's not the same rotation. I mean, you know, did May pitch any innings? I don't even no. think he was in. No. Uh, so I mean, you're you're losing. You're missing a couple big guns. That the, their bullpen situation wasn't dialed in. They have questionable closer situations with Kimbrough. I mean, they just they, they had some bad mojo. Yeah, I mean, they had bad mojo going in it, it, there at the end of the season where it was almost like they were. If they didn't have such a commanding lead throughout, they they might have been a team that that faltered there at the end and not got in. Had that been more of a tighter race out west, but you know they got such big lead that you know they kind of cruised into the playoffs really do you well and that's that's I mean that's another great question is like the yankees were just on high even even though they they'd won the the east like a week early yeah. a week before the season like with the judge stuff there was just like constant i don't know if you would call it pressure i don't know i, I it just felt like they had to be up even though they didn't have to be up right. you know what i mean uh um, then they were just tired after it happened, well, then, but does that week off? Do you, does that week off fuck with you a little bit? Because you got to think the Dodgers go down, the Braves went down, the Yankees took got taken game five by Cleveland. Um, I'm not trying. I don't want to create excuses, I, I'm, but it seems that it would be maybe a little challenge. I don't know as a hitter, and I think Chad and I kind of touched on it a little bit. But you lab being there for a long time, like. Would a week off kind of screw your timing up or whatever rhythm you were in or, or however you felt you were in the box in the moment? Yeah, but <clears throat> there, you know, we all sit back and think, like, do they have a week off? Dude, there's guys that aren't on the playoff roster that are throwing live yeah. uh, that are potentially going to uh, – that are going to make the next team's roster or the next series roster. So they're still getting their at-bats. They're still getting opportunities to see some some bullets that that, that are going to allow them to maintain their timing. Like, they just don't walk away from it, just take BP for right. six days. You know, they're still seeing dudes. Um, that That's still going on. Um, so yes, it does screw with you because you know you're not necessarily doing Th- it those the aren't same. those aren't for your the life. Adrenaline's not yeah, there. Yeah, it's you not know, the same the, situation. The, the, the fans aren't there. The, the 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 songs aren't playing. You know, it's not the same atmosphere. Uh, but you're still able to work on things. Um, and granted, I mean, I don't think you can really over seven days. How can you really prepare for a series where there's going to be thirty five, forty thousand people in the stands? I mean. Uh, you know, given you, you just you you can't prepare for what situations are ahead, really. I mean, you don't you can't you know you can practice certain situations, but you don't know, man. You might be put in some situation that you oh we didn't work on that. Well, shit, dude. Here it is. 
You got to find a way to compete. Um, but those guys still stay sharp. Uh, the, the pitchers are throwing to live hitters and hitters are, are taking their hacks and, and tracking or, or doing whatever they need to do to, get, to, to stay in shape, uh, primarily with their eyeballs. Um, cause like you said, it's a timing thing. Um, and hitting is a timing thing, you know, guys with shitty timing don't hit, but, uh, you know, if you, they're, they're still doing those things, no doubt. Yeah. I don't know. I, again, I, I can't imagine you're, it, I guess it's just different. Cause it's not like those guys have just come out of a series where their season's on the line every game, you know, and you're, you got to go down for a week and I don't know. They're professionals though, right? They're the best to do it. I, I well, that's why is this going to be a take a toll you know they're not going to move the world series up it's still friday still friday and that's it, it which i think's ridiculous yeah. like this it, absurd like you wait it, it is a whole it's a whole week like i heard him say it last night and i'm like <clears throat> they're, they're gonna sit for five days before they gotta play uh it, it's just it's a way to make more money man extend it you know I think Jeff Fry was joking, like we're going to be playing into Thanksgiving here for four long. You know? <laughs> it like, feels that the way. Turkey, the Turkey World Series. It feels that way. I mean, it's all one way to guarantee you don't compete with NFL Sunday. I'm okay with if they want to have more teams in there. That's fine. I, I get it. I, you know, it's it gives more teams opportunity. It, it spices up, gets more people involved for for a more extended period of time. Uh, it sells more tickets. It sells more beers. It sells more hot dogs, jerseys, all that that stuff. Uh, so there's definitely but, more money but is it to not, be made. Is it not more inter- – I know teams – like, listen, I'm a Braves fan. They lost. I guess if you're a fan of a team, I guess maybe it, it hurts. But, I mean, only one team wins it at the end of the year. So have you not been entertained with the playoffs? Yes. Now, it's easy because you don't have a team. But yeah. <clears throat> I, I find it inter- – I think what we talked about last week with possibly making – well, the reason why it's entertaining is because you're seeing baseball being played the way baseball is supposed to be played in the playoffs because now you have to win. It's not about going and trying to hit home runs and strike out, and if we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. Now you have to win. So you're seeing guys battle with two strikes, put the ball on the ground, move runners over. I mean, we said it before, the Phillies scored four runs on and a ball wasn't – there was no extra base hits. Like, it's well, baseball. that's how baseball. Baseball's be become the NBA during the regular mm-hmm. season. They don't play defense. Yeah. You know, in the in baseball, they play for arbitration. You know, you know, if I'm a guy in a position, they're they're playing for they're they're playing for their salary arbitrations and they're playing for contracts during the year. Um, stats. Um, you know, you get to playoff time, dude. Like every base runner counts. That guy moving up ninety feet's big. It's a whole different pressure because now that knock is. It, you're, it's one knock away from a run. Well, in the way uh, they the way they use the analytics and make pitching moves, you might get a guy out of the game just by getting somebody to second base. That's kind of how <clears throat> that's how detailed and uh, in depth the analytical stuff is. Like, I mean, it calculates to where runners and what base they're on, uh, who's on the mound, what what pitch data he has, and uh, very interesting analytical stuff they'll throw out there, but. Hey man, that's starting to sound like Mr. Baseball, dude. I had you know I led the team in doubles in August and after, <laughs> after the, the eighth, night. after oh, the eighth, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, uh, But you know, on every spectrum for or on every end of that 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 analytical number, like oh, there's a sixty eight percent chance. Well, yeah, there's still that thirty two percent chance that it goes the other way, uh, and it's just that stuff gives that takes the blame, in my opinion, that takes the blame out of it. So I'll. I'll the, for us, on the scouting side, is a lot of teams have models now. So you plug in the information, the model spits it out. Oh, you take this guy. Well, the, all the model said, take it. Well, dude, the model's not a human. Like, just because the model said, like, I don't know. It, it, it deflects blame, uh, in my opinion. That's what I think models. Or accountability. And, uh, yeah, accountability. Like, dude, who gets the blame? It's not Ro- Roberts gets the blame. It's the manager gets the blame. It's not the dudes upstairs that are pumping the, the, the product downstairs. It's the, the guy's that has to enforce it and, and make the moves. He's the one that catches all the heat. They want to get rid of Dodd, Dodd, Dodd Roberts for years already. I mean, it's no uncommon thing. Every year they're ready to fire that dude, you know, yeah. and he shouldn't have said maybe some of the stuff he said to start the year, you know, chalk it up. We're winning the whole mm-hmm. series, but Hey dude, he's confident in his club. Whatever. I mean, I would want to play for a guy like that, mm-hmm. that believes in your team. No yeah. doubt. <clears throat> it's just the game has been, uh, uh, 
um, overtaken by this, these, these numbers and analytics and just garbage. Like, you know, Bregman's ball, he hits out like, dude, did that, you, did you see the swing path that he took? They weren't talking about the launch angle. It was a flat swing. It was a, it was ideal. It was that nice little hoop, like nice little hula hoop sphere through the zone. Blah, blah, blah. head got through the zone, you know, they weren't talking about launch angle there, exit velocity. Who gives a shit about exit velocity? It's a home run. Whether it gets out at 92 miles an hour, it gets out 115 miles an hour. The ball went over the fence, regardless. Um, like maybe start, you know, when they want to, baseball is probably going to change to where they start giving you more point. You get an extra run if you hit a ball over 100. Oh, you get a double because you hit that 120. Come on, dude. I mean, I don't know. Um, well, it's that's why not, the Yankees make an excuse that judges didn't get out. Oh, the, the dome the with the, with on, the roof dude. open. Come on, man. <laughs> I think somebody, I saw somebody say that Bregman's would have been out of at least 25 parks and judges would have been out of only one. And it was Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium, yeah, because it's a short porch, you know, and they've been talking about him leaving. And, and man, if I'm here, like just from a hitting perspective, you know, and I've heard San Francisco has been a, a team that, that's rumored to, to make a run at him. And man, dude, he's not going to hit 62 in San Francisco. No, no uh uh-uh. uh. He'll hit 62 in, in, in New York. And granted, listen, he's got power to hit 62, but it's going to be a lot more difficult pa- uh, task to hit those home runs in that ballpark um, compared to Yankee Stadium or or even he went to like a place like Houston or, or Colorado. Yeah, it's a big park, but, dude, he'd be hitting mega pumps there. You know, like uh, for him, like he's going to get paid no matter where he goes. He's going to hit home runs. It's just going to be like the ballpark. I, I really do believe, especially if they go back to these dead balls per se, they're saying, no, no, he's hitting dead balls. You know, in June, everybody was hitting hot baseballs. Now everybody's hitting dead balls. Um, so I don't know, man. Like, I don't think that offensive, I think Giants fans are going to be disappointed that he's not hitting 50 or 60 in that park every year. Uh, but I don't know, man. Tough, tough call. I Tough still call. think he stays with the Yankees, though. I agree. Right now, but he's I mean, got to entertain some ideas, yeah. though. But he absolutely he hits the all fields. That's what. That's why Yankee Stadium is so good for him. He's not just your typical pull power hitter. No, he needs right field. Well, and, and he's not going to hit it four twenty to right center out. You know, no. Even above the wall, it says three fifteen, but it's really like three forty, three fifty to get it over the. And then the, the wall wind. and the the air up there. Like, I mean, I know the East Coast, it's colder, the ball don't fly the same, but dude, AT&T, man, or what do they call it now? What's the name? I, is it? I don't even know. I don't know. Like, I used to call it pac Bell. <laughs> yeah, I just, at and I call it at and Oracle still. Park? I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Oracle. I think it's Oracle. Oracle. So, or I mean, the ball doesn't really get out of that. The ball doesn't necessarily jump out of that yard, you know? I mean, it, it's all dictated upon what the wind's swirling around there, you know? Uh, so, he, he, he's going to end up getting paid wherever he's at, Uh and, you know, more power to him. Good for him, dude. He's, you know, good things happen to good people. And, and you talk about a guy that's good for the game, they don't get much better than him. I um, agree. No, I absolutely agree. Definitely a good role model. Definitely. 62 I'll, bombs, he didn't pimp one of them. Not one. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. why aren't we emulating a guy like that? Like, or a Mike Trout. He don't pimp him or act him. I know Reese Hoskins, he's been hot. I just spread a stat. He's got four hits. It's four bombs. He's hit four bombs. How hot is that? Was he four for 25? I mean, that's <laughs> awesome. Cool. Four bombs. They've been big bombs. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the bat slams and the the nailers, come on, man, dude. Like, Yeah, what? I mean, we like kind of Hoskins, talked about it a little bit last week, but is it my, the moment, like, though? I am one of the moments, but keep it like... <laughs> You know, Hoskins bat slamming, like, I didn't really like that one. But, hey, dude, that was more moment. The shit well, that, he was, the like, shit he that was Naylor did was, yeah. nah, man, that yeah. wasn't. That was personal. That was like, fuck you, dude. I'm yeah. fucking going to show you up right now, and I'm going to yeah. make you act like a clown. When you're and, still and losing. Yeah, like, that yeah. wasn't. I, that was the wrong place for that, in my opinion. Um, and I hope I can't wait. Like, I am <laughs> circling that game that Cole starts against Cleveland next year because I can't wait to watch him drill his ass. And I hope he goes to the mound. I hope they fight. I hope there's a brawl. I, I do. Because you don't do that to somebody, dude. That's 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 the utmost disrespectful thing right there. Like, bat slam, cool. He's looking at the dugout, pointing at the dugout. Okay, I get it. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't tell a kid to do it, but hey, man, in the moment, big bomb, bass. Okay, cool. Nailer out, dude. Because it was all the way around the bases. Out, rocking all the way around. I talking mean, New York. Shit. New York let him have it. I think the ultimate was is, I mean, they ended their season. So, but I, I, I'm with you. 
He better put. He better chin strap that in the helmet, man. I'm telling you, dude, because Cole's Cole's a competitive fucker, dude. And he's he's one of those those pitchers that, hey, man, he's got him. He remembers that shit, dude. Oh, they never forget. They don't forget, yeah. man. You know, they don't forget. You know, and I hope he knocks his helmet off his head because guys need to learn how to act, man. I'm all about dudes hitting bombs, but just dude, act like you've done it before, man. You uh. I mean, I don't know if anybody's surprised it's playoff baseball and it's the Astros, but the Yankees get swept in the ALCS. Uh, had a lead a couple different times, actually, throughout the series and just for whatever reason couldn't hang on to it. And like you you mentioned, the, the Astros pitching was starting pitching, bullpen, their offense, their defense, like... They just do everything really you well. You got to have starting pitching. Like you, they don't get in that position without starting. You can't pitching. wait to get to Cole and, and Cortez and Nestor to to when try you, to catch up. When you get yeah, when you get in the playoffs, though, you look at like a team like the Royals back in what was it, twenty fifteen? <clears> when you got to the sixth inning, dude, that game was done because they were going. Was it Hernandez, uh, Ventura, Ventura? Um, and then they had Wade Davis was yep. closing the back end. They had another those four dudes that when they got to the sixth, it was over. Man, Dunsky's yeah. dude, like it's uh, kind of where it all. I think that I always take it, like that's kind of where that started. Like they had four or five guys, and it was just get us to the sixth, and we're gonna win. You know what's funny though? On my end, like when we do what we do, we don't value relief pitching like that. Like we just don't. Um, when we're scouting them, they always. If you look at the draft, typically, I mean, Matt Matt Anderson back in what 1999 was the exception. He was like the first pick overall. He's a closer, or whatnot. But if you start looking at it, you look at that first round. That the first two, three rounds are not relievers. They might end up relievers, but you're drafting those guys to be starting pitching. If you're a, if I put a re- reliever role on a dude right out the gate, he already he he backs up after like the third, fourth round. Like you, there's slot where you take those guys. And if it's like a high end reliever, that's going to be like a stopper type, like a back end dude, that guy's going to nestle in like the third, fourth round, maybe jump up to the second if he's that good. Um, and, and typically if he jumps up to the second, that guy is probably going to go to the minors for maybe a month and a half and boom, he's in the league. Um, but we undervalue the bullpen role like that, that what we call them kind of like the, the eighth inning, ninth inning dudes. We kind of undervalue those guys a little bit in the draft. But they end up paying off big when you get in moments like this where you look at, like, hey, these dudes. I mean, even our bullpen in 2018 was awesome, dude. Um, the guys we had running out of there. Um, so you get those guys, you get to a certain spot in a game, man. Like, dude, ball game. It's ball game. Like, we better get lucky right now. Uh, we better have some good at bats and hope that maybe we catch a break. It's not the old adage of like, if we get to the bullpen, we got a chance. Mm-mm. Now it's like, we better get to the starter because get if, to the starter. If yeah. it's the seventh, we're shit out of luck. You start getting to the back end, dude, these guys are throwing so hard nowadays and their sliders are filth. You know, the, these sliders they're ripping off, you know, mid eighties, upper eighties, dude, they're falling off tables, man. Well, that's kind of like good. That Harper swing last night. It was a 99 little, and it had some sync to it. I mean, and he, a ball was not high, wasn't up, but Jesus, man, ninety nine with a little bit of movement. Like you, you talk about approach, where he hit that baseball, it's like how many guys are trying to yank? If that's a swing and miss for most that, guys. If he's geared to yank, if he's geared to yank that, he doesn't hit that ball. It's strike three. You're out. You know he's he's gonna roll over it, or he's gonna yeah yeah he's gonna top or roll over or something. But um, no, man, I mean that's like the most non talked about thing in all of baseball anymore is approach. You know, he used to talk to Tony Gwynn used to talk about approach. Uh, good hitters, Edgar Martinez would talk about approach, um, you know. And but nowadays it's like we talk about the swing because what well, is it's it? A so would you cut? You would know? you say it starts there? Your approach, yeah, one hundred percent. Because everybody man. like it's it starts. It's now it starts swing. If you're trying to put, if you're trying to put your a swing, you're not getting the type of pitch every now. If you're getting a pitch that's that since in your a swing zone, yeah, you put your a swing on it, man. But once you get to two strikes, do you? You can't be getting your A swing off like right now. And that's what's going on. Everybody's A swinging. Like it's the going for the gusto swing. Every swing. 0 2, 1 2, 3 1, leverage count, behind and count. It's the same swing. The guys that hit are the guys that, that cut their swings down and, and engage and initiate more contact and utilize more of the field. Um, you know, like that's probably the most attractive thing to me is a young amateur hitter that can use the whole field. And not just do it on fastballs, but be able to make an adjustment on a breaking ball and hit a breaking ball the other way. Like, that's hitting to me. Like, what we're seeing now, dude, it's ghetto hack. It's like, it's just geared for bombs. And, I mean, that's a, cool. If you're that type of dude, 
all right. But once you get to two strikes, man, like, dude, putting a ball in play, a lot of shit can happen. We're watching it play out right now in the playoffs. I mean, making guys play defense and guys are making errors. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that would get to the big leagues if, if they made more contact. That's just plain and simple. Uh, yeah, they hit some home runs in the minors, but a lot of guys hit home runs in the minors, but how many of them actually hit? Uh, so, we, man, we talk about this all the time, like just when we're when you're evaluating a hitter, like, you know, especially on the pro side, you're going in to watch a pro hitter who's an A-ball or something, and you're going to write this guy up, and, and he's hitting 250. You know, that's like a four-bat. Okay, but I'm going to write this guy up, and he's going to be a five-bat in the big leagues. No, man, most of the guys that are four bats in the minors were five bats in the big leagues. The guys that are six bats in the big leagues, they were seven bats in the minors. Like, they raked in the minors, and they get the big leagues, and it just kind of, they go down a grade, sometimes two grades. Um, so all those guys coming up in the minors are plus hitters for them. You're, you're a plus hitter, you get to the big leagues. The big leagues will sort you out. But, you know, we sit back, and we're trying to say that, dude, there's a three bat. We're projecting it would be a five bat in the big leagues, but... Dude, the track record of this guy says he can't hit already. So why are we saying <laughs> yeah. he's going to? He's gonna figure it out at the hardest level. Yeah, <laughs> and you know it's that's the hardest thing Doesn't to judge. Make. That's why hitting is so hard. You know, especially judging a high school hitter because what you're watching him against. Um, and then we start valuing like obviously, oh, we all value these big events. Well, these big events don't have everybody in it. Like there's a lot of good baseball players that don't go to those big events. A lot of good pitchers that don't go to those events. So, you know. Um, Hitting is definitely the hard, one of the probably the hardest thing to evaluate. The pitching, listen, man, like I know the analytical stuff is isn't real cool, but if you're actually watching a pitcher pitch, a lot of the data that you get will match what your eyeballs already see. I mean, especially more so on a guy like you sit back and you go, God dang, dude, this guy's got a. I just watched a couple of kids this weekend. They're throwing 93, 95 miles an hour. Well, I'm what they're getting squared up left and right, left and right. Well, and then you start looking at it and. You go, okay, this guy lacks extension. You know, he's throwing the ball. These guys are seeing the ball for 58 feet rather than seeing it for 46 feet, you know. Um, so you start gauging that and you say, hey, the, like, the office will say, hey, what do, you, what do you got on so-and-so's fastball? It's like, oh, dude, I think it's kind of light. You know, and a lot of contact, like got a lot of good swings, a lot of barrel contact. And he goes, well, you know, the data kind of matches that. And it, you, so if you're actually watching, dude, you don't need the data. Yeah. The data just confirms what your eyeballs right. have already seen. Um, How much do those guys... Maybe you're tired too. Hmm. Like when you're seeing a guy, it's and it's October. It's like, you, well, you just pitched a full spring, you just pitched all summer, and now I'm watching you in October, and you don't have your best shit. Is it more like? Is it that? Is there? Is how much of it is? I'm, they need to. That shut happens it down. a lot, um, and that would happen more so, uh, especially on the pro side. Like when you're pro scouting, and and they would send us out to do it, but they send us out to see short season, which. You know, we're seeing college players that have been pretty much going since January already. And you're you're seeing a starting pitcher who's already thrown, you know, he started 14 games in college. You know, in college he's 92, 95. Now you're seeing him, he's 88, 92. You know, and you make that judgment and you're like, oh, dude, this guy ain't got no fastball. There's not a fastball there. And then he hits that whole offseason and he comes back like, I'll use Alec Marsh. Marsh uh, was a guy that I kind of, I didn't make a mess up on him, but I had a roll lower than what he actually was because I saw his boo-boo fastball after he'd logged all these innings at Arizona right. State, you know, and then he'd gone out that off season, got his legs back under him, came back to spring, everything, everything bumped up a whole grade. So, you know, and that's the hardest thing about doing my job, man. I'm not always going to be right, dude. We're not, we're not yeah. always right. That's why we do it. But usually we have a pretty good idea of what we're looking at and, and where guys are going to go and stuff. But still, there's no science to it, man. If it was that easy, shit, dude, nobody, every, 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 every pick we took would get to the big <laughs> leagues, but it's not that easy, man. Kind of playing off that, uh, the, the ALCS MVP was Jeremy Pena. Yeah. And you kind of mentioned we, Astros don't bring back Carlos Correa. And it's like, what did, you know, they knew something everybody else maybe didn't know. And maybe it's just, he had a good postseason. Or How often do you, you see that kind of stuff play out too? Like, yeah, they know what they got. They know what they have. And, 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 uh, and maybe that's why the years were a problem for them because mm -hmm. it's like, well, we have this guy just waiting to jump in this lineup and, and he's now four years younger than you. Yes. Well, and that's why Derek Jeter, that's why if you were a shortstop, you got drafted by the Yankees in the 90s and 2000s, and you, you're punching yourself <laughs> in the face, dude, because there was nowhere to go, you yeah. know, like they knew what they had, and there's nobody that could, could actually 
bring up that we could replace a guy like that. But in, in Correa's case, um, the Astros um, have done a, a good job on the international side. And, you know, they brought that kid in and they knew that he could step in and, and fill those shoes. And, man, he might end up being better than Correa. He's well, a you young look kid. At he's got a little juice. He's got a little savvy with the glove, man. He runs a little bit. Like, he's, he's exciting at, at this, this point. And um, he came up big for him. I'm not know? trying to take any away from Correa either. I think no, Correa's he's a great, a great player. player. Great player, too. But, you know, there he wants more years yeah. along with the money. And it's just like, well we got a guy behind you here. Like they were willing to move on from that, you know, and that's, I guess as a fan, we don't get to see or think or that's just the business side of it. That is, I mean, Korea probably would want to, would have wanted to stay with Houston. Yeah. uh, Well, look look what that lineup kind of does. I'm sure that lineup helps paint out a little bit, right? It helped Korea out. Well, in Minnesota was, you know, they thought last year they made a little push. They won the central. They were getting in and then they were going to make a push at maybe this year that this was be the year uh, it just didn't pan out for them up there. Uh, I don't think he started out real great, and no. I think he had a pretty subpar season for the most part. So, I mean, hey man, he got his contract, but Houston, Houston got a nice still little doing replacement. What he, yeah, and they're still doing what they do. <clears throat> that's what I always tell these still kids. winning. That's why I tell these kids, man. Like, dude, the game's gonna move on, man. The game's gonna keep trucking, dude. You you know you big league me now, and you don't return my calls and all that shit. Well, guess what, pal? The game's gonna return that favor to you one day. You know, you just. You never know, man. Like, you get hurt, you're on the training room table. Yeah, that's the game's still going to get played at seven o'clock, whether you're there or not. So, just hey, man. You had an interesting thing we were talking about earlier. I think you you said you put out polls on Instagram and Twitter for it. I don't know if you how much you saw lab, but it was the in game in game interviews. I thought because I thought I missed the one with Harper and Boone. And yeah, they I thought they were after, after he took out Nestor. And I'm like, dude, if I was him, I'd be you're playing for your last game and now you're you're down by one. I'd be so pissed. I, I think, don't care how good looking Shahadi is. <laughs> I'm no, not getting interviewed. It's not even about that. Like that that dude, it's the middle of the game. It's the middle you, there's intense moments like you don't need disruptions. Like no. that I think Man, since they started doing that, I'm just really not a fan of that. Like, and you can tell a lot of these managers aren't either. You know, they get on there, they when they want to get that shit over with. Yeah. They're doing it because they got to do it. Um, and and honestly, dude, those are parts of the game, dude. We don't need to know about. Like, we don't need to talk to why he made the move in the third. Dude, he made the move because he's the manager. Just let him make his move. Ask him that shit after after the game. Like, it's called yeah. the press conference after the game, right? Ask him all that shit later. But. No, man, it's just everybody wants to get so in tune and be a part of it that, dude, like kind of overstepping your boundaries at, at that point, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Well, the one I saw with Harper, I thought that was, I thought that was after the game. Chad's like, no, it's right after he came in the dugout for hitting his own run. Yeah. Right? And it's like, yeah, I think Jeff Fry was the one that tweeted like, Rosenthal, you could have asked those same exact questions when the game was over. No. They'd served no purpose during the game. But these are all people with these ideas that have never been in a dugout they've never well, it's played major a, league baseball they've never played a game. point of sale like they're trying to sell it and, and you say that like oh well they, they get offended well dude that's the truth so yeah. you don't understand that when you're in a dugout like and all these moves are happening and it's intense moments you don't need some reporter come tapping on the shoulder to be like hey dude we're gonna do a little quick three minute clip no man like i'm fucking engaged in the game right now i don't have time for this shit like but that's Fucking media, dude. One of you, like, yeah. Yankee fans are probably like, why is he, you know what I mean? Why is he on TV? Yeah. yeah. And you're probably right. He probably doesn't have a choice. They don't. You know, Major League Baseball do controls the, they, they, the, they the gotta mob, gotta man. Well, they just like I said it. earlier, Harper took his MVP trophy in for his interview after the game. And he's like, I don't want this here, but MLB's making me put it here. It's like they're mic'd up, too. I don't like the mic'd up thing, man. I wouldn't want to be mic'd up, dude. They'd have to bleep out so much shit, dude, during that. <laughs> I mean, for the like, All-Star fuck. game, I whatever. That's fun. Home run derby, Yeah, like fun. that the home run derby, cool. Like, you, know, you don't want to do All-Star game, whatever. But, like, game, like, a serious game, like, we're, we're counting that shit to the standings and stuff, dude. I'm sorry, but you can talk to me afterwards. It's, it, it's not that important right now to the <clears throat> fucking people need to know right now. But people are, dude, pe- Baseball fans are, they want to speed the game up, speed the game up. But what happens in a game when it gets out of hand? They get up and leave. Like, dude, like, don't talk about speeding the game up and shit when you're going to get up and leave when the game gets slow, dude. Like, oh, just be a real fan. Like, just be a real fan. That's, that's, I just want people to be real fans. Well, I mean, again, we brought it up on here. The, they reported the, 
the, the game clock or the, the pitch clock sped up at what half hour. But again, for the for the TV audience, they'll just find a way to fill that with thirty minutes of ad commercials, revenue. dude. You know what I mean? Those, the TV slot doesn't change. No, they're going to be wearing advertisements on their uniforms before long. You Fox watch, Sports dude. One is still selling. TBS is still selling this slot time to make. Correct. You know what I mean? So it's well, okay, cool. The game's going to be a half hour shorter, but we're going to fill it with something. They'll anyways. find a way. One hundred percent. That's just where we're at today. It's just. It's gotten, uh, man, it's just all money driven, dude. Everything is money oriented and driven. Just that's, I think that's why they're selling the <clears throat> win reality hitting, you know, like, <laughs> I I don't know, man. I don't even know if I can say this, but are they going to start selling win reality sex too? Like, or, or are we going to start selling? Probably already it's do. the same. I mean, it's a <laughs> probably, well, it's probably the argument first. will be, oh, well, it's not the same. Well, why not? Well, you, it's, you don't feel, oh, okay. Well, tell me how you feel hitting a baseball when you're looking through goggles, hey, dude, I'm with, with the, you with some wizard stick, dude. Like, come That's, on, man. It's not a bat. You don't feel contact. And it's just another way to make money off people, dude. Make money off people yeah. selling selling numbers, and they you can sell the numbers because people see the numbers. They can see it, and that's what they believe in. Well, exit me went up. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, I was telling Chad the the one thing. Like, listen, I'm sure there's a lot of good hitting people out there that are posting their videos on Twitter or TikTok or, because I trust me, I'm by no means the end all be all. I know probably nothing compared to you guys, but. I always see these videos of these hitting guys and nobody's ever fucking hitting. They're not, it's a drill with a ball here and it's underneath here and it's, Mm -hmm. it's movements and it's posture and it's, it's really cool. Like a lot of big words and big words tilt and, but I don't ever see anybody hitting. No, they don't hit dude. They, 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 it's all self promoters too. That's they they just sit around and and like I said before, they're all a bunch of tasters. They sit around and love and taste their own ideas and do their ideas. These guys are putting professional players careers in their hands. They've never fucking walked a walk. Like, I mean, I I would, I wouldn't mind hearing some of their feedback or like, and it's like, everybody's drills is the same type of thing. And it's like, I don't, I'm not thinking about that kind of stuff in the box. I'm not thinking about, if like, these, Segura on those two strike pitches was not thinking about any of that shit. Yeah. If it these was, kids would actually go watch what a real swing looks like and not listen to what their instructors say. So, just for example, I had a kid on running the scout team. We were up at Stanford and we were hitting in the cage and I was flipping to him and I flipped him inside a couple of times and he's, he's a big barrel tilt. Dude, a lot of, I like, you know, he came out, the kid's got power. He, he, he has a chance to get into some power, but the way his path works, there's not enough comp, contact. So we're, I'm flipping to him in the cage and I'm flipping him inside. And I just, I, I say, hey man, show me how you get to this ball right here. Dude, I, I could not believe the position that he was in to hit this pitch. He had this knob, the pitch is on the inner third, it's a strike. And in my mind, I'm hitting it out front. I've got a flatter barrel, like there might be some tilt to it. Sure. You know, yeah. cause it's out in the front right. part of my swing, dude. This kid has his knob straight up in the air and his barrel straight up and down. And this is how he was going to hit the inside pitch. And I'm like, dude, you're going to foul that ball off. It's going to hit you in your cock, bro. Like, (laughs) just look at that bat angle. Like, go home and and Google a a home run swing that looks like that and bring it to me. Because then I'll buy in. I said, but what you need to do is you need to film your swings. And you need to take them to your hitting coach and say, how come I can't hit a fucking fastball down the middle right now? What's wrong with my swing? Why am I swinging under the ball? How come I've had 12 at bats and I haven't got on top of one baseball? I've swung on. How, how come I'm paying you a hundred bucks a week and I can't hit when it counts? Why? Who's, 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 you know, who, putting the ball in your court now? I'm in the game doing the moves you're wanting me to do. How come I can't hit now? Somehow I'll get deflected back on the player. The player's not doing the move right or something. But, but, but. No, it's because that shit don't work. So scrap it, dude. Contact. Create contact. If you have power, the more contact you have, the more opportunities you'll have to get to your power. Dude, if you're making contact once out of 10 times and it's a ball you hit good, you're not making contact consistently enough. So I don't know, man. These dudes need to start backing up the product that they're putting out on there in the field. They only put the home runs. You know, <laughs> well, it's, you it's mentioned one the, kid out of 50 that they work with that has some success. And that kid would probably have success if he hit with anybody. Yeah, like yeah. they're just those they're gifted kind of players. Yeah. Uh, 
put that kid on there that couldn't hit a fucking ball off a tee and then show me hit him hitting bombs after six months working with you at River Park. Show me that kid. There's not going to be in those kids. Why? Because hitting's fucking hard, dude. You got to be wired right upstairs to be a good hitter. You, it, it's a different mentality. You, you're not good hitters. Don't accept swinging and missing, dude. I never fucking played with a guy that, you know, these days, these guys accept swinging and missing like it's nothing, dude. I was embarrassed striking out three times in a game was fucking embarrassing, dude. Now it's like, oh, I punched out three times, Yeah, but I hit a double. Cool, dude. It's fucking eight to one. It didn't count. And that count. double is recorded. Yeah, and that's the only thing that ends up on Twitter, <laughs> dude. <clears throat> you know, the dad leaves off the, the three punch outs prior to, but he'll put the double on there. I, have I mean, you guys like as that. hard as it would be to go <laughs> to three punches, like ultimately winning the game, you could live with it if you won the game. Like even that doesn't seem to matter. Like, you know what I mean? Like well, that's where defense started becoming important. Like to me, like playing shortstop. Okay. Like if I sucked it with the bat today, dude, I'm going to do something that's going to help my team win on the defensive side. Maybe I might come up later and I'm over three. I come up later. Now I'm going to get a bunt down. That's going to help my team win. Dude, these kids don't think like that, man. Because listen, you're gonna you're gonna have an over three day with some with some punchies. They're gonna happen. If you play long enough, it happens, dude. Like we shit on it, right? We kinda we joke about it, but right. we all had them. Yeah. We all had them. My my point that I'm trying to make is the consistency of the three punch outs. Like yes. man, you're playing yes. scout ball with me, yes. dude, and I give you twelve at bats and you punch out seven out of twelve at bats, I'm probably not gonna write a report on you, dude. I'm not. Now, if you have 12 at-bats and you make seven hard contacts, you punch out three times, dude, I'm probably going to write something up on you, man. But if you can't make contact and all you do is hit and BP, you're not much value to me. Uh, you're not much value to anybody. Yeah, so that <clears> you're probably a showcase, go across the board. Yeah. You're a showcase player. And, or I, Dude, I'm, I'm going to change my, my tent. You're a travel ball player now. That's what you are, dude. You're, just, you're like a travel ball player, dude. Like, all, you, all you ever tell me about is your travel ball stats. But I come watch you in your real games and you can't hit. Like I had somebody recently, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say who, another supporter of the podcast and actually a good friend, but he was like, hey, I need to get so-and-so's phone number regarding a certain player uh, because I, I, I want to talk to his head coach. I don't want to talk to his travel coach. Yeah. It happens all the time. I get calls all the time. And I, I refer the college coaches. Like When they call me, I say, well, have you talked to his high school coach yet? No, not yet. I've only talked with so and so. I say, ah, well, okay. That guy's just going to tell you what he wants to tell you because he collects a check from that people every month. You need to call the high school coach. Hey, listen. While I appreciate <clears throat> the, the the travel ball coach trying to get this kid right somewhere, awesome. It's just that the the, the road doesn't stop with him. No, right. It's it, then these college coaches they can't be sitting around. I mean, <clears throat> replying to every kid that wants to go to their school. I mean, that's that's called the recruiting process. Like. Um, you know, a buddy of mine, his kid's an eighth grader. He's like, oh, yeah, a couple of his buddies just committed. I said, what? He's like, yeah, he's an eighth grade. He's like, he's kind of stressed about it. I go, your kid's an eighth grade, man. Hey, he's not going to know what shoes he wants to wear when he's 18, like much less what college. Like, dude, these kids are making such – it's bad decisions, dude. And I'm sorry, parents, but you're not helping. Uh, parents, dude, grow up. Like, grow up. So it's not about you. Uh, this isn't your recruiting trip. I, I've talked to a couple of my buddies. Well, we are going to, we are, no, your kid's going to do it, dude. Not you, you know, you kick them out of the nest, dude. You, you want them to grow up. Hey man, <laughs> you're making a grown up decision at eighth grade, 14 freshman. Shame on, on everybody though. At that point, shame on the colleges. Shame well, on the the colleges. Is it really about the decision or is it really about, you just want everybody to know the status? Yes. Probably, I mean, we, yeah, we've we've harped on that. Your before, kid is for sure. Your kid is committed somewhere. Yeah, well, it's. Dude, but I love when they're but like, like, you oh, haven't this stepped is on spot for him. He's committed. He's all in. And then a year later, he's committed somewhere else. This is the spot for him. He's all in. It's like you dude. haven't stepped on a high school campus. You've never gone to like a That's prom. The, You're going to be a completely different person in two years. No, and what we see now, okay, like, you don't drive that does, like. All that does is force. It's like I, I think I said it last spring, but because of the amount of freshmen we had on varsity already last year and the year before, all that's going to do is keep driving more freshmen. So tell me, you got a bunch of fourteen-year-old kids in the track. How good is the track, really? 
or how good is a conference? I'm sorry, I might have to beat the trap out because I'll make somebody <laughs> mad. But they don't follow how, us. How anymore. good no. is the conference if you got a bunch of freshmen everywhere? No, yeah, in great three point. years, maybe the conference is going to be good. But currently, the conference isn't very good, dude. If you got freshmen cracking your lineup, I'm sorry, man. Like they're not that talented. How many freaking draft picks have we had out of here? Out of here that were freshmen. Look at the history of the freshmen around the valley that played up on varsity. Look at the outcome after four years. God, I, I don't want to talk about you, know, you start saying names, everybody gets butt hurt. But well, the, that's, the but reality I mean, of it is reality. Uh, it doesn't change that. No, man. Yeah. Just because you play on varsity as a freshman, that don't mean shit, man. It's the big picture, dude. Like, well, that's the thing, too. People hear that and it's like, well, you're bashing a con. No, we're not. No, I'm telling it, like real stories that yeah, actually yeah. happened. Um, you know, and man, I think that just ends up putting a lot more pressure on these kids, dude. Now you got to live up to something that maybe you're not. Well, down I brought the up the, the, the driving or like prom or. Yeah, there are other distractions that they haven't even experienced yet. No, like right now in eighth grade, I go home. Like I'm in eighth grade. I, what do I play? Video games. I play baseball. I don't have any. There's not a lot of outside influence going on. I can't drive. I can't leave the house. Once there's more distractions like that available to you, your interest tends to maybe go backwards well, for some of these guys. Most of these dudes are, you know, there's a lot of pressure. Okay, at the young age, dude, you're most of these dudes. Their dads are like highly involved like overly involved. And I see it on, dude, trust me, I see it. My, my son's that age. I, I When we go to these tournaments, I see a lot of these dads and I just, you know, they all think their kids are going to be big leaguers, dude. And that's fine. That's nice to have dreams. Um, but I was talking to a couple other scouts yesterday up at Sac State and it's like, dude, you either have it or you don't. You're either wired that way or you're not. Um, and, and and given sometimes opportunity and, and it, it allows you to get there um, like I said, if you're a shortstop with the Yankees, you're probably not getting to the big leagues to play shortstop when you Derek Jeter's there. Um, so opportunity obviously is a lot, but dude, you gotta be wired, right? <clears throat> like just cause you're all-star and I see all these dudes on Instagram, they're posting their kids rings, his rings from a 10, 12, 13 year old tournament. Like, dude, none of that shit matters, dude. None of it, none of it matters. Long picture, dude, long picture, just Teach your kid how to play the game right. Teach your kid how to work hard. Teach your kid how to teach your kid how to go out and earn his opportunities, earn his spots. Don't feel entitled because oh we attended this place and oh uh, we're this dude or we play on this team. Nobody gives a flying fuck. Man. What was the one the other day about what the coach is doing on Tuesday for that week's tournament? Oh, the travel ball clown yeah. that has to muster up a team for the weekend. Well, oh. I'm just thinking if you're every week, for eight hours. every week yeah. you're trying to find a new roster. What does Come that on, say man. about your organization. organization? That's not a good thing, I would think, right? No, I, it's not. It's been pushing 20 years since I coached travel ball, okay? We had the same team roughly for the two years I did it. Maybe three or four pieces changed. Yep. But for the most part, it was the same kids for almost two years. It wasn't every week trying to find well, a roster. That's what I'm trying to tell a lot of these guys around here is like they think they got to go join. Their, there's, there's two or three programs now that are really kind of they've infiltrated our area i say infiltrated well, because the name on like, the front matters now yeah right? you know because you're that much better because you wear this uniform than that is, is that i mean i i don't I'm, I'm kind of out of it i don't get to see it obviously as much as you do but is that it seems as an outsider looking in that it matters the status of everything matters yes it does they think they're going to get good scholarships if they play for certain teams and, and if they don't play for this certain team then they don't have a shot like college coaches just won't look at them but that's far from the truth man like um, a college, a good college, a good college recruiter is not walking past a, a good player because he's not wearing a, a certain uniform. Um, and, and nowadays, dude, you don't have to join these big organizations to get in these tournaments. You know, as I'm telling my buddies now that I have 13, 14 year old boys, you don't have to go join that little group of team that you guys have developed with and, and grown up with and got all these tournaments, but you guys can still stay together. And then you all watch each other grow. These college coaches, dude, I go with them all the time to Arizona. I'm sitting there at these little clover leaves. There's four fields. There's 60 college coaches, dude. They're not just sitting at one field. They're bouncing from field to field. They're watching everybody. Not just, oh, hey, I got uh, Whistle Dick's fucking travel team here. I'm going to go watch them. And then the I'm going to go watch, uh, yeah, the, the, the Alpha Prime uh, great uh, baseball play. No, dude, they don't do that shit. They, they look at the roster and they've talked to people and they talk to scouts. They talk to other coaches that coach travel ball and they say, hey, man, what do you got? Hey, such and such pretty good player. And then they end up at those fields uh, and they see everybody. Um, 
yeah, certain programs do have their fluffy little, oh, we're going to do team camps. We're going to do this, that, and the other thing. Dude, most of that time, those coaches know. Those coaches know who they want on that team already. They don't, they're not there to recruit. They can't recruit. If they're doing a team camp, there's four, there's four teams of 20 players, 80 players. They're not, they're not recruiting all 80 players, guys. Like I say it all the time. The first rounders need somebody to play with too. Just like the superstars need somebody to play with. It's no different. Um, so just, I don't know. Like I said, man, teach your kids how to be good baseball players. Learn how to play the game right. Like I see more kids wearing white tube socks. It's the most disgusting thing I see. Like they pull their pants up, they got white tube socks on. Like, bro, you, how hard is it to go to Dick's and buy yourself a pair of red socks to wear that matches your red top? Like, you look like a, a fucking hobo, dude. Or the like, ankle socks. Yeah, well, your ankle you're, socks you're is the greatest, dude. You're expected to be taken seriously. Or, or I got, you know, these kids anymore, they, they, man, I can't even say it. It's, they're being taught this shit and they're being allowed to do these things because we're in this, let the kids be kids mode. No, man, teach well, the kids to be it? responsible, it was man. The, it was Prime. It was Deion Sanders that talked about in that video, like, we don't because everybody gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. If I say you're soft, I'm going to end up in a meeting with the AD and mm -hmm. your parents because my honest evaluation of you is that you're not tough enough. Yeah. You're not here to, to ball. You're here to get a, a school and that's fine. Let's be honest about what you're here for. Like today coach can't be that way. You can't no. be that honest. No, I want to give the player like at the end of the scout ball stuff, like there's 50 kids out there. I want to give them evaluations. I can't do that. I wanted to, and I told him I was going to, and, and then I started thinking about, it. I'm like, dude, I can't do that. You'll break them. I can't do that because then all of a sudden I say something about a kid. Next thing you know, my boss is getting an email because I yeah. told the kid he had, he had below average arm strength. And the mom and dad think he's got a plus arm or some travel ball coach said he had a plus arm. You know, I can't do that. Like, you know, I'll you do it for you. You want to call me and ask me like one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one, that's cool. I'll talk to you and stuff and I'll tell you what you need to do and stuff. But man, I, I you can't be honest anymore, man. Like, well, for you, that's kind of a no win, I think. No, dude. Uh, but then I'm it's like, like, how much are they really being helped? They don't want you know that. I mean? They don't want it. They don't want it because they don't actually want to get better. They just want to get told how good they are all the time, all the time. I had a kid. So one of the kids, I, I had my tryout and one of the kids is a dude. He's a good little player. He's weak as shit, dude. He, he's, a, he's weak. So I say, hey, man, I'm going to keep you on the practice squad. I'm not going to keep you on the other squad. But I want you to come to the workouts and stuff. He's like, oh, oh. I, you know, I, I can't make it. Why? I, I got the other. Well, what if I put you on the team? You'd make it if I put you on the team. But because that's to come to practice to get better, you don't want to be on the team. Oh, because you're committed already, too. So now I don't know what I'm doing. I must not kept you on the team. They, they don't want to work, man. And you know what happened? Four or five of those kids that were on my practice team ended up playing in the games. Why? Because they got better, dude. And then there's a kid that can't be there. A uh, little shortstop from Clovis I. Really grew on me, dude. He's a good player. He's going to be a good Division One player if he wants to go to Division One. But he's probably going to have to go to JUCO first and prove himself. Great little player. But that kid showed up every Monday night, worked his tail off. You know, next, you know, hey, we have an opportunity on this weekend. Dude, I, I'm, I need an infielder. You want to come? Boom. He shows up. He gets three knocks. You think I'm going to bring him back? Hell yeah, I'm going to bring him back. Yeah. You're coming every Wednesday now. You know, and he plays himself. That's what it's about, dude. It's not being given shit. It's called earning shit, going out and working for it. Was he the best player at the tryout when he, when I saw this this certain player from Clovis? I know. He didn't jump out at me. But the more I watched him, the more he showed up, the more he got in front of the eyeballs, you start seeing. And, and a lot of players don't understand that. They, man, you got to keep grinding you know, uh, take advantage up. of those opportunities show when they up, come dude. too. I'm not, you know, just it's an opportunity to show up and get better, man. Yeah, for sure. And guys don't want to do that. They're afraid of it. Oh, he didn't put me on this team. Well, dude, grow some sack and show <laughs> up and show me why I screwed up. Show me why I fucked up. Because right now you're looking soft to me. And that place you're committed to, they ain't going to want that, dude. Because there's going to be six other shortstops when you get there, dude. That aren't that. So if you're not ready to compete to get your spot, then, yeah. dude, you might as well just, you know, decommit. So it's a different world. This is my little thing, my Plato. No one is more hated than he who speaks the truth. Like, that's I, that's one of my little, my little things. But it's the truth, man. You, you, you can't tell anybody anything. You can't. Uh, even constructive criticism gets flipped like you're like mm -hmm. you're bashing a kid. No, man. A kid acts like a clown. Like, we'll be watching the Twitter clips. I'm glad I have my little burner deal, whatever. I talk shit. But, like, dude, 
the kid's pimping home runs, doing all this shit. You say, hey, man, why don't you grow up? Then all of a sudden, because you reply and tell You're the, the kid, like, I'm an asshole. Like, yeah. oh, dude, he's just a kid. But they no, want to be, man. Yeah, but a lot of them want to be treated like adults. You want to be treated like an adult. They want to get paid like adults. They want to be like pros. Well, I'm sorry, but pros aren't children. Pros are men. And you act like a man. Well, they like, get told when they fuck up, too. Let the kids be kids is cool at River Park. It's cool at fucking Babe Ruth Diamonds. But when you're playing in big leagues and your games are on TV, dude, it's time to act like a man. Like, play like a kid, but act like a man. Uh, I mean, maybe that should be the motto more so. Play like, you know, you want to fucking play like a kid? Cool, but act like a man. Um, but this let the kids be kid shit, <clears throat> it's gotten taken to a whole new level, dude. Some guys, for sure. It's let the kids act like clowns is what is, is taking, is, is happening. I mean, just go watch a little travel ball tournament. Kid hit a home run. Dude, it's like they're doing cartwheels and backflips and break dancing and shit across the home plate. I mean, talking shit to the other team. I mean, dude, I can't handle that shit, man. Like, dude, it bothers me, man. It just bothers me. It's just not the way that I it's can, not the I way the game. Should I'd have play. a problem with it too. Though, can you imagine Coach Bennett watching catching today? These dudes on one <laughs> knee, like missing no. balls to their freaking throwing arm. Like, oh, dude, he'd he probably would have retired. He flip his gourd with this shit yeah. today. Yeah, he would whoa, probably bounce out. Dude, check that. What, what, what do you mean you want to go down to a knee? What are you talking about? He'd be like, what do you mean, Bert Holt watching one knee catching? <laughs> All right, that wouldn't happen. I gotta what ask. Happened? I gotta ask before we wrap up. Do you want to take a team for the World Series? Uh, you said National League, but now the Astros are there, and I knew it was going to come to this. That's why I retracted the statement last time. So, I want. I think I want Dusty to win one more than Harper, but I just don't know if I could take. So you're gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Astros okay. just because I have to pick a team. You don't have to. Yeah, I do. You don't have to. I don't want to lose my credibility. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of want to stay with the, the Phillies and the hot. I mean, I don't, I don't really care at this point, but I'm because I'm with you. I wouldn't mind seeing Dusty get it. I mean, he does. I also, I also like, you know, to see Bryce Harper leave the Nats. They, they win. go win it. And, you know, it's like shit. And I like him. I've always liked his game. I, I don't think he's overrated, by the way. Um you want to, you got one on you? You or is that a is that a party foul? You're not allowed to. I mean, to. like I it's for me it's like I root for I, I can't root for one particular team per se. Like I, I'm rooting for Dusty. Like either side, if either team won, it's not like you know like years past where you kind of be upset if a yeah. certain team won. This year, if either team won, I'd be I'd be kind of fired up. I, I think it. Here. I think what Philadelphia has done. I, I like what what Dombrowski's done with that team and and how he's transformed them and. Um, but on the other hand, like, you know, I, I've sat in Dusty Baker's living room and talked with him and his kid and, and, and just listened to his stories and, and, and the amount of uh, history um, that he has in the game and, and the amount of time he spent in the game. And I, I think it would be really special for him Absolutely. to win one as a manager. Um, and then I look at it from a scouting perspective. Do I want my boy Tim Costa to get the ring or do I want my buddy Jason Waha to get the ring? So, I mean, either both of them are getting rings, but uh, one just gets the big dog and the other one yeah. gets the, the runner up. But uh, you kind of root for that. But this year, it's I mean, it's 50-50 for me. I mean, I can't lean one direction or the other. Uh, I, I was kind of talking about earlier. I, I think that maybe this year's maybe like a good versus evil yeah. or data versus old school. Yeah. Um, it, it could be. I don't know. The Astros aren't like that as heavily as they were, um, but they still are in that 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 realm of things per se. But uh, yeah, man, it's like 50 50 for me. I'd be happy for either side. OK, um, I got a shout out, you know, obviously Aaron Judge being a dog and the season he had uh, MVP season in my book uh, should be. And then, you know, Ben Fritz, the bullpen coach with the Padres, then making their run. Congrats to him and and them. Uh, and then Connor Brogdon's going to World Series. So, yeah. I mean, pretty cool to see a local guy. Uh, who, I mean, came in in game four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they give up, what, third. three, four runs? He and he goes and gets, out. what, seven outs? And just, a third, yeah. I mean, or big two. dog, man. Yeah, That's, he threw well. Sort of third. He threw well. So I'm happy for him, there. his family, just really good people, and actually really, really good supporters of ours, too. And uh, so, you know, I'm kind of cheering for him also. Um, but that was a hard one with, with Fritz and, the, and, and Padres and, and Phillies because – Guys that have done the podcast, I, I want to root for him. So, Absolutely. Uh, but him being a local tie, too, I, I also would love to see him get it. You get to see Dylan Lee get it last year with the Braves. So, uh, But good luck to both teams. It's going to be a fun World Series. Uh, Lab, can, I, before congrats also. We talked to you before the draft, but you lock in another high draft pick with Cutter Coffee in the second round. 
congrats to you for that, my friend. Hot, you're on fire, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude, I've been pretty lucky the last uh, two out of three years. <clears throat> short um, stops, couple short stops. I like my high school. Well, the Nick's a second baseman. Yeah, he was a high school shortstop at the time, but he's out in the fall league uh, in cutters, getting ready to go. Um, you know, they're supposed to be at Instructs, uh, but the hurricane kind of yeah. um, canceled the Florida Instructs, so he's going to get his first taste of the Dominican. Um, they're going to send him out to the nice. Dominican for for instructional league. So. Um, excited about him. He got off to a little bit of a slow start, just getting adjusted to, to the speed of things. But uh, he's adapted well and made good strides. And um, hopefully he can kind of move at the same pace that Nick's moved and uh, get to the fall league here in, you know, a year or so. And, um, you know, they control their own destiny, man. That's what I tell these guys. I mean, even even BJ, the kid we took in 2021, like, do you control your own destiny? You know, it's just given an opportunity. You get your opportunities. You got to make the most of them. Uh, but Grant, you know, granted Nick and, and Cutter will get a few more just because of uh, the type of money we've given them. But Nick's doing well. Nick's hitting, you know, he's out in the fall league getting around 330, 340, uh, hitting some doubles. And hopefully Cutter can, can he's got all the tools and, you know, he's geared right upstairs and kid works his ass off. It's baseball 24-7, so sky's kind of the limit for him. And just keep my fingers crossed and he stays on the right path, man. Well, and depending what you guys do with Xander – this off season, shortstop could be available soon. Yeah, you know, and we can talk about it off the air, but I heard some interesting reasons on why he might not come back, which I, I've never in my life thought I'd hear. But, um, yeah, we'll he's see. He's so underrated, man, in my opinion. I think he's, yeah, I, I agree with you. He's a top three. I, I'm I'm a big fan of Trey Turner at, yeah. at shortstop. Another guy I, that I think never he's talks just, about enough. Yeah, you, nobody talks about that dude enough, but that guy's like legitimately a, a, a five tool player when yep. you look at it. It's a combination of speed, power, defense, average, um, average I mean, mentality. And, you know, you watch the dude and you don't realize how fast that dude's moving because he does it pretty easy. Um, but Xander, another one, man. I mean, that guy comes up clutch and, and he has moments where, yeah, he, he gets started slow sometimes, but when he gets rolling, um, he's one of the best in the box. And then, defensively he's no slouch either not at all uh, i'm a big know, fan I'm he a can big pick fan. it so hopefully you know we're able to bring him back uh but with the addition of story i don't know if, if yeah. he'll slide over and then we make a different move but well and you guys um, know what you have like the astros yeah I mean, who what knows? are you willing to part with um, for fingers crossed i'll be honest with you man my fingers crossed is like nick continues to to swing the bat well uh if xander does depart us uh story can slide over to short and um if Nick continues to hit and, and, and can get into some power and, and, and keep banging, if he goes out and bangs in double A, don't be surprised if, if he gets gets a call late September next year. So, yeah, hopefully. I mean, like I said, fingers crossed. He Pretty controls. Cool, yeah, it'd be awesome. Um, just haven't gotten a big leaguer yet, you know. Um, you know, I wasn't scouting when Luplo was – I wasn't scouting Luplo or not, but <clears throat> I know he would have been a kid. I had it really high on my list. But I uh, haven't got a big leaguer yet, man. Um, so hopefully, uh, one of these guys pans out and, uh, gets to the show. I mean, I haven't got a lot, of, I haven't signed a lot of guys per se, but, uh, yeah, hopefully these two work out and, uh, they play up the middle for the Red Sox. That'd be pretty bitching to that sit would in be, the game and sick. say, I yeah. got both those guys, you know? So, um, Nick's probably like, you know, I was telling Cutter, both of them are really gratifying to me, like probably cause the amount of work I, I did on them, but Cutter, I did a shitload of work on Cutter, man. I spent so much time with him and it started early with him, uh, as a freshman, um, being around them and just kind of watching them grow. So that, that that's kind of what, you know, that one it's makes personal. it. Yeah. yeah, not so much. Yeah, yeah. it is. It, it, it is and it isn't. Um, the tools are there. It's not like I had to like, you know, it's like I was making shit up. Like the kid had power. The kid mm -hmm. had bats. You know, the, shits are, the tools are there. But it's actually watch him starting to get to it and starting understanding how good he could be. That That's kind of the fun part of the process. So sometimes you don't get them, man. They go off to school. They end up being first rounders. Uh, you know, high draft picks. And then you just want to make sure you're on those guys. You create good relationships with them. And um, it's kind of funny. Like I actually had to call some kids we're interviewing for a hitting position. I had to call some kids that were at Stanford and uh, my boss had called me and said, Hey man, you mind calling a couple of these dudes and ask some questions. So it was, it was pretty neat to call uh, dude. And these kids answered like right away. What's up, Labby? Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? You know? So it's like, you know, you, you create a relationship with these kids that Hey man, who knows? Maybe these kids are in the big leagues one day playing for the Orioles. And I roll up there with my kid, you know, we're sitting there. I say, Hey, Hey, Dosh, come over here. He comes over. Hey, what's up labs? You know, it, it'd be kind of cool to, uh, you, you create those relationships with these dudes. And, uh, so sometimes you don't always draft them, but, uh, that, that relationship you create can sometimes last forever. Yeah, so man. Just, it's kind of a cool gig. No, I love that. Love that. 
Uh, if you're not following the podcast, follow on Twitter at Hit or Die Podcast, on Instagram at Hit or Die. If you're watching here on, on YouTube or if you're listening, head over to YouTube and subscribe. Uh, Labby, thank you, my brother. It's always yeah. fun to have you in here. I enjoy it. Uh, I'm sure that people that listen to us love it. Uh, Roth, I'm glad your nose stopped bleeding. You made it. Finally, I went through a whole roll of fucking paper towels. <laughs> uh, again, we thank everybody that listens, downloads, shares it. Uh, that's another episode of the Hit or Die Podcast. Hit or Die.